Welcome, welcome everyone. We are so happy to see you this afternoon. This is one of my favorite weeks out of the whole year. We get to celebrate Thanksgiving this year. This is my absolutely favorite holiday. All the food preparation, all the sitting around the table, enjoying company and no pressure and having a good time. When um, Rick and I here first got married, we used to have everyone to our house or to whosoever turn it was to celebrate Thanksgiving yet. And boy, we get done eating our feast and clear that table up and the card games would start. So I look forward to this every year with my family and friends and I hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving. But today we are going to get started on a couple um, recipes that we thought you would enjoy. We're gonna talk about our tower garden because you know we have to show how beautiful our tower garden grew during the summer. And you can see, so I'm just amazed at this picture when we put it up because it has so many tomatoes on it, as you can see as we're sp uh, spanning it. But we are going to show you how the progress is going in the basement. We clean those tower gardens up. I guess they've been up and running for about a week or two downstairs in our basement. And you can see the growth already since last week. We are so thrilled. We're trying out some strawberries on the tower garden. Um, it's a little tricky growing strawberries, so I am going to do all the legwork so when you get your tower garden, we can help you so you don't have any problems with it. So, that being said, I thought maybe we would cover what would not grow on the tower garden today. We can grow all these beautiful lettuces and that, but the one thing that will not grow on the tower garden is a root vegetable. And there's a lot of root vegetables this time of year that are very, very tasty. So the one that we're going to tackle today because it's Thanksgiving week is sweet potatoes. And sweet potatoes are just one of my favorite uh, root vegetables to eat. We are going to, you see this lovely, lovely casserole that we made. Can we see it in the, there it is. Okay, this is a sweet potato casserole, only we did a healthier version on it. But before we tell you how to make this casserole, I would like to cover the nutrition value of a sweet potato because it is so good for gut health. It's full of fiber and antioxidants. You have vitamins and minerals in there. And it's, it has lots and lots of beta carotene, so it supports your vision. And that you can see here, I have one that's cooked. The, that nice orange look on it is what is the beta carotene in there. So the best way I found to cook a sweet potato is we wrap them in foil. We turn the oven on for 400 degrees and we just let it bake. We did this last night while we were uh, doing some other things and 45 minutes later, they were done. So depending on the size of your sweet potato, you want to go about uh, anywhere from 40 to 60 minutes. But the way to test if they're done is just poke them with a fork. So we wrapped them in foil, laid them inside the oven, and they were set to go for us today. And this is how we prepare ahead of time for our meals. Something else that you can do is when you know you're going to be home, cook your potatoes, and then you can um, puree them mash them with a mixer and then you can just divide them up into one cup servings and put them in the freezer and then they're ready to go because the cookie recipe I have for you is fantastic. So we're losing Rick because he's chasing the cleanup crew because they're barking. Okay so once you bake your sweet potato look at how easy the skin just comes right off of here. Do you see how easy this just peels? I just take that knife and and you still have all the nutrients in there. Look at how wonderful that comes off. And we're going to throw this, throw this, listen to me. We're gonna put it in our mixer. We already have about three and a half pounds. And on this recipe, it's calling for about four pounds of sweet potatoes. So I'm just gonna put this in the mixer with what's already in there. And I have about anywhere from three and a half to four pounds. It doesn't have to be exact, but we are going to add the rest of our ingredients here on our recipe. And we have an egg we're gonna put in. So we have our egg in, oh, here boss. And then we have our uh, cinnamon and ginger and nutmeg. So we have that all ready to go in. 
And then I had already tossed some salt in, but you do want to add about a teaspoon of salt to that. So we're going to mix this up. And this, this recipe is so easy to make. So now that we have this all mixed, I am just going to put it in, I use Corningware because I love it because it can go from table to, to um, or the oven to the table. So let's just hand that to the boss. And we're gonna take this casserole dish that we have just sprayed lightly with some cooking spray. And I'm sure everybody has that at, at their home. Let's see if I put it there. Can you see it okay? And then we're going to put it all in here. Now, guys, the one thing that I wanted to, the reason why I wanted to do this, this is such a staple for Thanksgiving. You will notice that there is not any sugar in here, but it's going to come in the topping part when we put the topping on. And the big thing with this is you can make this today and then just preheat it or reheat it on Thursday and it's going to taste just as delicious and that's one casserole you have out of the way for your Thanksgiving meal and I find that you could have cooked your sweet potatoes last week and put them in the freezer so all this preparation they have homemade and healthier version that's how you do it you just plan ahead of time so you see how beautiful that looks whoops there you go right now we're going to take in this bowl, we have some pecans here, about a half a cup of pecans, and I'm adding a tablespoon of brown sugar, and I'm using dark brown sugar, it doesn't matter, but brown sugar will give it a little darker color, and some cinnamon, and we're going to put it in here. Whoops, that brown sugar stuck in there, how dare it? <laughs> We've had it out too long. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take in, I do it by hand, I mix this all up and then we're going to just sprinkle it right on top. See how beautiful that's gonna look. Now, if you find you do want it a little bit sweeter, you could put a second tablespoon of brown sugar on it. Our first um, casserole that we pre-bake, I forgot to add the cinnamon. So what I did is I sprinkled it on top before it, it cooked. So, you know, guys, it, you can do this whatever way you want. You know what else would taste good on here is a little maple syrup, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, we like maple syrup drizzled on a lot of root vegetables. So see how beautiful that is? I'm gonna hand this off to Rick so he can pop it in the oven. And then when it's done, it's gonna look just like this one. So on Thanksgiving, I now have two casseroles. I, I like dividing my casseroles into two dishes because you can preheat them faster for your meal. And then we always have a large, large crowd because we're from a big family. So then we would take and um, have one ready to go while the other one's still heating. Because we have to plan our dishes because we do a lot of homemade things in the oven. Now, the other thing is I am, if you guys look, you can probably see that we have already dug into this. This is a new recipe I tried and it is delicious. You have your tester fork. I don't know if Rick has tried it. I'm going to let him come over and try it. to get all the good stuff you read my right mm -hmm. i think this is so delicious and what i like about it Very is good. i am not going to feel guilty eating this because we are going to have lots and lots of sweets on thanksgiving because what is thanksgiving without pie so let's take this off the table because i have something else i'm going to share with you okay this my dear is these are called breakfast cookies and they are made with sweet potatoes. And I am telling you, I have a grandson who is a very, very picky eater and he loves these because I put chocolate chips in them and a little bit of chocolate chips to make a child eat something so healthy. Why not? Okay. So now that we have our counter off clean. I have my food processor. I'm just going to pull it up a little bit closer. So what we're doing with this recipe, these are our breakfast cookies. 
And the reason I like making these is one, I always make a double batch. Two, they freeze really well. I put them in containers. And when the kids are over, the grandkids, and they want cookies, I even have my daughter-in-law asking for them. They're great for on the go because they're chuck full of really good solid ingredients. So you're going to end up using, whoops, we got this backwards, don't we? Okay. Um, about three cups of old-fashioned oats. If you want them gluten-free, by all means, use gluten-free. So I'm going to put those in. And here's the trick to this recipe. You're just gonna close up your food processor and you're gonna pulse it about four, four, four or five times. Oh, I guess I'm not, oh, it's not working. <laughs> I think we hit the off button here. We must've tripped something. Anyway, so we're gonna pulse that four or five times. Yeah, it's not going. See, even we can have a mess. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. We already have to do it. But I'll take the bowl. We're, we're not going to pulse them today, but I would do about four, five times, and then it will grind them just so they're not as um, in flakes. Okay. Ready? We're having a little snafu here. He's going to make sure I got it right. Yeah, it's not working. Okay, can we take it out and put it in the bowl now? Okay. That's <laughs> See, you don't have to be that smart to do this, guys. I had it on backwards. But you just want to move Yeah. Okay. If I can convince Rick to move the, the um, oats to the bowl, we will continue with the recipe. But I have the bowl, and we are going to add the oats in. Where's my... We're going to add a cup of almond flour. It's going to give us a little more stability. And then we have our ginger some, and our baking powder. I have it all pre-measured. And my, um, I use sea salt. And I like having all these pre-made because it makes it, when you get interrupted when you're baking, there's nothing worse than trying to figure out where you're at on your recipe. So then we will we'll add that. And then we have our cup of sweet potatoes that we're gonna add in here, which are very, very good. And this was all pre-cooked ahead of time. And then we have um, some maple syrup. Now, in addition to the maple syrup, instead of maple syrup, you could substitute honey. So you can have either or going on this recipe, which is really nice. Sometimes if I'm making a really big batch, I'll do half and half just to make it taste a little bit different. And then we'll have some coconut oil that's been melted. And then we're going to wait. I'm going to go ahead and add my two teaspoons of vanilla. I love adding vanilla. You can never go wrong by adding extra. And I'm thinking that next, go ahead, Rick. I Next week, we should possibly teach you how to make your own vanilla. It won't be ready for this Christmas because it takes a few weeks for it to set. But boy, is it cheaper than buying vanilla. You want to go ahead and mix? So I'm going to have Rick mix this up here real quick for us. I told him to speed it up. Let's hope it doesn't go flying. Okay. Now we're just going to, I'm adding the chocolate chips. You could substitute whatever you want. I had milk chocolate on hand. That's what's going in. Um, I always keep milk chocolate chocolate chips on hand because my son likes them. I prefer semi-sweet, but I have to spoil the kids. Okay. Okay. See how easy that was to mix that recipe up? Now, I'm going to have Rick bring over one of our baking stones, our smaller one, and I'm going to show you the trick to these cookies. So it's, now, if you don't have a large cookie scoop, because these you want to do about a fourth of a cup, you can just take a fourth cup measuring cup like this, go in and scoop your cookie up, and then just put it on the thing. But what you're going to do is you're going to flatten a little bit. And since this is a breakfast cookie, you want it to be a nice size. And there, that's enough to eat for breakfast or two of them. And you have a great breakfast going. And you know, what about the days you oversleep? Or the kids are hungry. They come home from school. I just love having these on hand um, for my grandson, Weston, because he just loves these. So um, 
I would love to know what you think of these ideas I have for you guys. I know that we're using sweet potatoes today, but there are ways to uh, hide the flavor. You can't tell this is a sweet potato. I would love to give this cookie to someone who doesn't like sweet potatoes and see what they think because it's so good for you. So you you can make it gluten free. You got for your sugar, you have maple syrup, or you can use honey either way, which is a better choice than white sugar. So you see how the little twist on it is kind of really healthy for you. Isn't doesn't that look delicious? Let me hand this to you. I'm going to have Rick move this over and grab that other casserole off the counter back here. Look at this. Let's get both of these in the picture. Does that just not look phenomenal? So when the kids come on Thanksgiving, we will have cookies and mom's not going to yell if they grab one because it's a healthy version. Isn't that wonderful? Because there's nothing worse than when grandma has cookies out, mom and dad get upset because the kids try to sneak them before the, the dinner. And of course, I always have to have cookies out for them, don't I? Yep. Rick and I love spoiling our grandkids. Okay, so what do you think of our casserole for today? I'm so excited about Thanksgiving this week. And next week, you know, we're going to start baking season now. This is always the weekend. So next week, I'm going to one. I'm going to teach you how to make your own vanilla. And what is your favorite cookie? Who loves a good snickerdoodle cookie? Well, I have a protein uh, energy bite that I'm going to make out, out of our complete mix that is called snickerdoodle protein bite. And this is a great substitute for a cookie because, of course, it's healthy for you and you're getting all those wonderful nutri nutrients from the protein bite. Now, as far as our tower garden goes, we really did not demo anything from the tower garden today because I did want to talk to you about how when you grow in the tower garden, you are unable to put root vegetables on there because the root system grows down into the tower. So that would be the only thing you couldn't grow on the tower, but you can make beautiful, beautiful dishes with it. Look at how gorgeous that is. I cannot wait to get the lettuce. I have a a roasted uh, pumpkin salad all ready to go for Thanksgiving. And I'm using all those baby greens off of the tower that are ready to go. And the best thing about it is when I take that lettuce off of that, the baby um, lettuce on there, you get to harvest it from the outside. It just keeps producing more and more. And we'll have lettuce through the whole winter as the season goes. Very excited to share all of my foods on Thanksgiving and I hope my family enjoys them. And I would love to hear what you're cooking or what your favorite dish is. Reach out to me. Um, let me know if you need some more information about Tower Garden, because I'm telling you, if we got you up and running this week, you could possibly have fresh lettuce greens by Christmas and New Year's. And wouldn't that be a great way to start the new year out with anybody that likes to start with a fresh eating program in the first of the year? So we want to wish you a very, very happy Thanksgiving and enjoy your family and be safe in your travels. And until next week, we'll see you next week with some beautiful cooking ideas. Bye for now. We got to call in the cleanup crew, yeah. the dogs. We'll, we'll get them. Okay. <laughs> Thanks.